Okay, so we just did our best to create a creature uh, composited out of at least five different sources that we were happy with, and we ended up with something that we saved as a PNG. Now, it's very important. The reason I'm starting my introduction to assignment three with our PNG is it's very important that our PNG is clean, that we don't have a lot of uh, strokes kind of floating around. So I'll try it on a few different backgrounds, on white, on black, on gray, right? To make sure that there's nothing unexpected that I will be moving over to my landscape with my creature. And then I'm pretty confident and happy with the overall shape and silhouette of my creature to communicate the things I'm wanting. And then we turn off the background and save it as a PNG because that preserves the transparency. And I'm just going to save it to the desktop. And remember when we save things, we always use our name and we use a description. And this is what we did to submit our work, and you guys did beautifully at that. So this is what's interesting. When we're blending two past assignments together, we want to use the highest resolution, best files we have, right? And a PNG file is actually not the highest resolution, best file we have. It's just a quick way of merging it all together, right? But Whenever you compress, like a PNG file or a JPEG, any online file format, it only matters, it only hurts the image if you continue to open it, change it, save it, and compress it each time. It's like rounding numbers. So the first time we make a PNG, the image is still perfect. All the pixels are exactly where they're supposed to be. But it has the added benefit of being all merged together and not taking up as much memory as a multi-layered PSD file. So now, once I have that PNG saved to my desktop, so I'd like you all to find your PNG for assignment two and bring that onto your desktop. Now I need to find the other part of this assignment, which is the landscape, right? So what are we doing? We are doing assignment three, which is what I call a creature scape. And we're blending assignments one and two together with a new intention. The intention of assignment one was to make a believable fantasy landscape out of five different composites, and I gave you a composition to, to be inspired by, to try to follow, so that it, it really worked as a landscape. The next project, we'll use some past student examples here, under assignment three, is to take your creature and place it within your fantasy landscape in a way that seems like they were always meant to go together, right? So this is no longer telling us about the landscape. This is about a creature, a figurative element in the landscape, right? It's really painting a scene. And I want your creature to take up at least 20% of the landscape around it. So you can't just sneak it off into a corner, right? Like this little turtle guy, he couldn't be just like peeking behind here, really tiny. So you need to make this a focal point in your scene. And in order to do that, you are allowed to crop your landscape. So in this instance, you can see that the landscape's been cropped down to a square. Because that's the beauty of compositing a landscape, you can put your creature in and then find the good composition around it. Right. And as soon as you bring in a figurative element onto an environment, you start to have the, the ingredients for narrative, right? For a story to be told. And so you need to start thinking about what is the atmosphere doing? How is that creature impacting the environment, right? How can the lighting match? Where are they going? Where are they coming from? All that kind of stuff. Now, little things are gonna matter like shadows. but also big things like the atmosphere, the color temperature. <laughs> Whether it disturbs birds or not in the fields, right? 
So I'll show you a few tricks for this. So this guy's kind of camouflaged in the landscape, and that's uh, maybe with the long shadow, maybe that's 20%, but I'm guessing that's less than 20%, right? I want the creature to be a little bit more prominent. So we, even if it's camouflaged, I want it more foreground, right? But what you could simply do is then crop your landscape so that your creature is larger within it. We made these big enough so that is possible. Okay, so now we need assignment one. And so we need to go to our best quality reference for assignment one. But we also want to use the assets of assignment one. Those assets are in layers. So, ah, what am I doing? so let me drag my folder out to the desktop. Let me open up assignment one. And I want you to open your assignment one PSD file, your Photoshop file. So I labeled mine assignment one landscape composition, PSD. It is 652 megabytes. It is around 11 by 14 inches. It is at 350 pixels per inch. So we should have plenty of space in which our creature can roam. And yet our creature is supposed to be around some, something within 11 by 14 inches and around 350 pixels per inch. So we should be able to really have our creature dominate the landscape if we need to. It could be take up 90% of the landscape. We should have the resolution for that. And it's always okay to shrink your images as long as you're keeping your end format in mind. But you don't want to ever have to grow your creatures, right? So if you had resolution problems with your creature composite and it was only 72 pixels per inch, when you bring it into your landscape, it's going to be tiny. So what do you do? I don't want you to grow that creature to fit your landscape. Instead, I want you to multiply that creature. <laughs> so you might have a swarm of your creatures, right? Because they're going to be tiny. But if you grow them, they'll just get softer and softer and, and less convincing. So resolution matters here. Now my Photoshop is taking a while to, to open up. So while that's happening, I get a little preview of my landscape here, which is nice. And I can think of my creature. I have him here. And I want to think of some questions that will help me place my creature. Because I can try a lot of different things. So my creature is colorful, makes sense with the landscape. Um, my creature does not have teeth. My creature does not have claws. My creature doesn't seem to be very aggressive. It doesn't look like it's built for speed, right? So my creature seems to be more like a, uh, a foraging creature where his only defense is going to be kind of blending into the landscape, right? And natural camouflage. So what do I do? I grab my PNG right off of the desktop and I drag and drop it right into assignment one. And you'll see how big it is, right? Go ahead and hit return, place it because it comes in as a smart object, right? And then immediately, and it will probably center it, you know, right in your landscape. Then immediately, you know, pull it to the very top of all your layers. And then use command left bracket and we can start sinking it down through your layers. Because the way we set up our landscape, our foreground elements are in the front, right? So if we sink it back, you can see that now its legs are getting hidden behind the foreground. Now its legs are getting hidden behind the middle ground. And now he's like a giant, you know, lava pit monster. And then what I think is best, that's actually kind of cool. What I think is best is um, once he starts sinking behind your atmosphere, right? You see the mist coming off of that lava pool is overtaking him. So push him back as push your creature back as far as you can before he just disappears entirely. Like all I'm seeing of my creature now is just the tiniest hint behind the mist. So I'm going to push him in front of that. Does that make sense? 
then you can organize and get to know your landscape a little bit better. My landscape got a little chaotic. But before I go any further, I'm going to save it as something new. So I'm going to say File, Save As. This is no longer a landscape composition. This is a creature scape composition. And it's assignment three. And I'm going to save that to the desktop as a Photoshop file, a PSD. Remember, you never write PSD. You let the computer put that in once you've chosen the digital format. Now, that was just the size that my assignment two was. And that was just centered right in the middle. And so don't um, make any assumptions, right? Don't go in without a willingness to change your plan because that actually worked pretty well. And that might be option number one for me, where he's just hanging out and bathing in this lava pit, right? I kind of like that idea. So let's try a different one. Now I can duplicate Command J my creature and I'm gonna give my creature a color so he's easy to find. So I'm gonna make him blue. Why not? Take the blue off of my middle ground there. Make this creature one blue. So a lot, a lot of it is understanding our layers again, right? And I'm gonna turn off one and then work with the copy. Now, just like everything we've done in compositing, I can play with my scale. I hit Command T and as a smart object still, which will keep it at the highest resolution possible, I can scale it down holding shift. I think, well, I don't want my creature to be the biggest thing in the landscape, right? I want my creature to be this little guy, but I still want him to take up at least 20% of the landscape. So I'm gonna shrink him down to about half size. And what's nice is even that little shape that mushroom shape of his tail, that already kind of matches the feeling of my environment. That's just lucky. But if I now use command right bracket to bring him up through the layers, there he's coming over the rocks, through the woods, right into the foreground. I can use my move tool and kind of think, whoops, I want to turn off auto select so I'm not getting my texture overlays. That's why it's nice to have my, my layer labeled with blue. And I want to think, okay, where should he go? What should he be uh, overlapping or going under? I want him behind these crystals, let's say. There we go. So now he's more of a foreground creature. He's smaller in the landscape. Is he still a focal point? I think so, right? I can decide, okay, that's what he looks like over there. Let's make another duplicate of him. And let's transform him, Command-T, and flip it horizontally. Your creature should work in the reverse orientation. If it just looks terrible flipped, then there's some flaw in your creature design. And I can put him over here behind these rocks instead, and maybe that will showcase him a little bit more. So when you're thinking about your creature, tilt him back a little bit, you want to think about not just their scale in the environment, but you want to think what's their, it's like an actor, what's their motivation? Are they looking for food? Are they scared of a predator that's going to come? Um, what kind of body language do we want them to have? And how does that have to do with how they're interacting with the environment? So I'm gonna sink that one a little bit lower down. I'm gonna label this blue. Come on. Hmm. I'm to right click and it won't. So let's move him down. There we go, behind those rocks. 